Welcome to Hello Baltimore County. I'm your host, Ellen Kobler. The holidays are here, and whether you have kids or are buying gifts for children, it's very important to be aware that a lot of toys on the market can pose very real dangers. Here to share some important warnings is Dr. Linda Grossman, Chief of Baltimore County's Bureau of Clinical Services. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. All right, and we're looking forward to some show and tell here. Uh -huh. <laughs> tell uh -huh. us what are some of the key things that parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, everybody should think about when they're buying toys for children. Well, there's several things. One is that um, the best toys are ones that promote development, that, uh -huh. that match a where a child is or maybe slightly ahead and promote one of the key areas of development, um, which, which includes language development, creativity, um, gross motor development, fine motor development, cognitive development, and social skills. Kind okay, of because so, um, for children, um, play is learning. Yeah? Correct, yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so most of the kids that I know, even the really little ones, are focused on little screens. Uh -huh. um, what, what are the best types of toys for children of different ages? Well, the best toys are things that, that children can use in different ways to foster creativity. So for instance, these blocks, you can stack them like blocks, uh -huh. but they also have letters on them. Pretty so cute. that they're different things you can use. Um, certainly my grandkids also use them to represent food when they're playing and things oh, like really? that. So that, that <laughs> that's a nice, you know, something that you can use in multiple ways is a nice way to have it or um, craft kinds of projects. Play-Doh mm -hmm. is always a favorite oh, because yeah. kids can be very creative with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, toy cars, toy dolls, things like that all help promote creativity and allow children to use them both to foster language and talking with the kid about what they're doing helps that, but also to foster their playing with each other and sharing and things like that are nice. Um, with the older kids, similar kinds of things, that things that they can use to do um, with each other or help advance their skills is a nice way to go. Okay, and I always I always like to give books. Uh -huh. um, talk a little bit about reading and how that w helps with cognitive development and language. Sure. So so reading with children, um, reading with children, having children read to you, um, talking even picking up a book and talking about the pictures helps foster language and helps foster a love of reading. Um, kind of thing, and, and there are wonderful books out there for kids. Um, there clearly is data that suggests that, especially for children, it's nice to have it not in an electronic form, but actually have is that right? the uh -huh. real books kind okay. of thing that kids can play with, that they can chew on for the younger kids, <laughs> That's um, right. but things like that, so they learn the concept of turning pages and, and things like that. But how, how young of a child, how young should the child be when you first start reading? Birth. Really, <laughs> yes. tiny yeah, little babies. Yeah. Part nice. of that is we don't know exactly what is the point that it, children begin to absorb that. Clearly it's somewhere between birth and six months of age, but you're not going to know until you're doing it. So you might as well just start at birth and read to them. Okay. Now, obviously and not very long, but, yeah. and it can be just pulling out a book and talking about the pictures counts as reading to them. Nice, and you mentioned age appropriate. Um, so some toys give the actual age. How else can you kind of tell where your age and developmentally appropriate? Um, well, as you said, looking on the box helps out, and then also thinking about what kinds of things the child enjoys and what would kind of be the next related step. So if a child can do well with the individual pieces of puzzle that are not connected to each other, then the next step is obviously going to be to look for a puzzle that has pieces where you have to actually insert them in, but you're not going to want too many, you aren't going to want to jump from the individual spaces to a 50-piece puzzle you're going to want to go to a 10 piece or a 12 piece or maybe a 15 piece puzzle. Okay, because you neither neither do you want to bore the child nor do you want to frustrate. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right, so toys obviously are for fun and they're meant to bring enjoyment, uh -huh. but they can also cause real harm. What should people yeah. know to keep their children safe? Well, it, this is really important. Over 250,000 children a year end up in the emergency <gasps> room with toy-related injuries. Oh my goodness. It's a huge number, um, and it's actually increased 40% in the last 20 years. Really? So it's really important to think about safety with toys. The age of the kid, there, there are different primary issues at different ages. Okay. So for instance, with very young kids, you have to be careful about small pieces. So Lincoln Logs are a favorite, and have been a favorite for many generations, uh -huh. but this piece is too small for a kid under three. Oh, right in their throat and yep. stick, yep. right? You know, uh. this piece is, is probably okay because you could reach in and pull it out. Oh, goodness. 
but this this connector piece is too small kind of thing. Okay. So thinking about that and if you're going to give toys like this to an older kid to be careful that the family is going to be able to save them for a time when the, the younger baby, the toddler is not around and wouldn't be grabbing the pieces. And that's not just the toddler that might live in the house but that might come to visit. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So families need to be aware of that. Children from from about four through and up, their, their major injuries tend to happen with toys that involve um, mobility, okay. scooters being the prime one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, scooters are actually a really fun toy, so that's yeah. not a bad thing to do, but if you're going to give a scooter to a child, it's nice to give them a helmet at the same time, because yeah. that makes a huge difference in whether or not they can use it safely. Okay, and um, sometimes toys are recalled, and you have some yes. resources for people to check on that. Yes, yes, the Con Consumer yeah. Safety Protection Commission publishes results every every year so you can go online and check that out. Okay, um, what about lead paint? So it's important to look for toys that that are, don't have lead paint. The main group, most American made toys are pretty good about checking that. Toys that are manufactured abroad, um, that although there are regulations that say they shouldn't import lead painted toys, it's mm -hmm. impossible for all of those to be checked. So it may be a good idea to avoid toys imported from countries like China that are painted because they may have lead paint on them. Okay. Or similarly, jewelry for some children's jewelry has lead in it. And if yeah. the child chews on it, that's not going to be good. Right. The other thing for young children is to avoid toys that have BPA as part of the mm -hmm. component. The, the plastic. If they're going to chew on them, that's not a good thing to have. So in find it. the ones that say non-BPA. Yeah. Um, are there types of toys that should just be avoided altogether? I, you know, the, probably the one that most comes to mind is that it's a really bad idea to give a child a toy gun that looks like a real gun. Okay, sure. Um, m for the safety of the child, because mm -hmm. if he pulls it out and somebody mistakes that for a real gun, the child might be ba badly hurt. Indeed. Or the police might even, you know, they wouldn't be trying to hurt your child, but if they think that's a real gun, that they, you know, so it's in, in your best interest not to have your child have a gun that looks a toy gun that looks like a real gun. So if you're going to do a gun, something that's sort of brightly colored, right. squirt gun looking thing. Right, right. The yeah. other thing is to avoid toys that have very sharp points, you know, so things like darts. Choose darts that have, you know, the suction cups or the soft tips, not the darts, not the adult darts that have the sharp points, yeah. things like that. And speaking of sharp points, I noticed the cute little fuzzy um, little uh, craft things there are uh -huh. made of wire and the uh -huh. edges of the cute fuzzy is a pretty sharp point. Yeah. So for the 12 year old, if you have a young child in the house, you gotta kind of yeah. be extra so, so thinking aware. about uh, things like that, sure. I, you know, I brought this along because it's, it's a creative <laughs> thing, but you're right, it does, you know, you have to be careful about using it properly. Yeah, yeah. for when yeah. it's developmentally appropriate. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, well thank you very much for, um, for giving us our little toy uh, tutorial here. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> sure, yeah. and thank you for watching Hello Baltimore County. We encourage you to check out Toy Safety Online and to connect with Baltimore County Government on Facebook and Twitter.